our genome is a huge book of billions of uh, letters, A, T, C, and G. So those sequence of the letters uh, are the genes we, we have. Most of the time, a disease happens not because of one gene have defects or multiple genes. So we need to know how to modify multiple genes simultaneously to be able to cure disease and to study biology. A couple years ago, it's very difficult to even make one uh, modification in one locus. But now, I think it's become possible to make uh, multiple changes in the genome. When you want to make a change in the genome, you really just need to go there and, and, and design molecular scissors to make a cut. And then you can have all kind of magic you can play with there. There are now three major classes of tools becoming available, like zinc finger nucleases, Talon, and, and CRISPR. The first two enzymes are, are literally like a scissor. So they have two halves, and each of them, each half recognizing part of the DNA sequences, they come together and make the cut. And the CRISPR is different because now your protein, Cas9, doesn't know where to cut, but it complexes with this small RNA molecule. And the RNA, if you know biochemistry, is, is made by four different flavor of nucleotide, uh, slightly different from DNA. So they can naturally pairing with the DNA. Now you can have this perfect small molecule that targeting wherever in the genome you want by base pairing and guide the Cas9 protein to go there and make the break. So when this system was defined, the first indication to us is it's a perfect tool for multiplex genome editing because you can express one protein very large, but many small molecules of RNA very easily. So we show that in a single cell, you can efficiently kill five genes simultaneously uh, in a single cell, so, which is quite remarkable at that time. And then you can also introduce the system using a fine needle to inject them into the fertilized egg, which is the first cell of our life. So this is a mouse embryo, a mouse zygote. So when you inject the CRISPR system in there, they start to cut the DNA at the very beginning of life. Once you modify this cell, this cell will develop into a whole mouse. So the mouse will have the exact same mutation in every single cell. So by doing that, we show you can actually introduce precise modification in multiple genes in one step. You can also insert in large pieces of sequences in defined locus in a, in a multiplexed way. You generate an animal uh, uh, in one step. And this principle can be applied to other species as well. In this example, each little ball is actually a mouse embryo developed four days after your one cell injection. And we put in different color protein after the endogenous gene that's expressed in those stages. So now you can see these two genes are labeled with two different colors, showing we can actually insert in thousands of nucleotide sequences in the defined locus. If you do this simultaneously, you can get orange color embryos, means you can simultaneously introduce two large pieces of DNA into two unique sequence in the whole organism. So this is, I think, very fascinating because it dramatically reduced the cost of making genetic modified animal as well as reduced time frame you need to make those animals, comparing to the traditional method of gene targeting, uh, which was awarded Nobel Prize for that uh, in 2007. We believe this will uh, actually become the new standards of making animal models. However, there are obviously ethical hurdles we have to cross to, to apply this to human. Now our focus is really to apply this to human in the somatic cells. So our favorite cells is the T cells. The left side is red blood cells and the right blue cells are the T cells. One of the most important effector cells for our immunity. Why we want to do this and why we want to do this in a multiplex way? Uh, now it's a very simple uh, cartoon to show how this works. So the T cells express a protein in our surface called T cell receptor. And this receptor will recognize another cells HLA molecule. If they think this HLA is from another individual, they will kill the cells. And if this HLA complex with some pathogen antigen, they will also kill the cells. So now you imagine, if I donate my T cells to you to combat your disease, it wouldn't work very well because my T cells have TCR that are going to kill your normal cells because we think it's alien. But you, you also have a lot of T cells. Your T cells will recognize my T cells as alien. So you're going to kill my T cells. So my T cells would not last long and will not be able to do it very well. So if you kill both TCR and HLA on my T cells, this becoming a cell I can donate to you and that's supposed to work much better. But we still need to prove this. With the power to really engineer the genome with great ease, also in a multiplex manner, I think the question uh, we're asking is really, how can we utilize this? Many possibilities we, we, we don't know before. And to what extent should we modify human cells? Because uh, uh, I think it's a question about somatic cells, other question about the germline or the human embryos. But I think the line is very blurry now because a lot of stem cell biologists are making the magic of turning every single cell, somatic cells, into a proponent stem cells or into a germ cells maybe. Even if I modified your fibroblast or skin cells, 
potentially in the next 10 years or five years, you can turn them into a sperm. So where is the line? I think it's a very uh, interesting time we are uh, now. Thank you.